Uh, hi, I'm DJ Spry, Director of Customer Engineering at Appstra. Uh, today, I'd like to talk to you a bit about how Appstra manages and automates enterprise SOC uh, and really discuss a bit about uh, what actually is enterprise SOC. And so, um, just real quick, <clears throat> jumping into it to make up some time. Uh, I just want to cover, we're going to cover the high level architecture of Sonic and what the differences is between Enterprise Sonic and Sonic and how you interface with it um, and how Appstra and AOS allows you to evaluate and operationalize Enterprise Sonic in the data center. And it's it, it, by this time, uh, for those of you who have watched previous sessions, we'll see that the normalization and everything else that we've seen uh, is a large part of how we're doing this. But uh, to move forward pretty quickly, um, just a quick recap for maybe those of you not familiar with Sonic uh, or what enterprise Sonic distribution is, is that uh, it was originally developed by Microsoft to operate uh, the networking in their Azure cloud platform. And in 2016, Microsoft donated Sonic to the Open Compute Project or OCP. Um, so it's a completely open source offering. And we at Appster have been involved with OCP and even Sonic uh, at the very beginning. <clears throat> and we presented several OCP summits. If you're interested, you can go check those out on YouTube. But uh, in May of this year, Dell Technologies announced an enterprise Sonic distribution that was based on its open source counterpart. Um, and this enterprise Sonic distribution includes a feature enhancements that's targeted to enterprise data centers and specifically spine and leaf network topologies and the features they need versus, say, the slim features that one would use in Azure Cloud. And what we're talking about are features like MLAG, uh, eVPN, VXLAN, SNMP, and even a common CLI. So, you know, those are not really part of the cloud OS offering, um, but I would wager that, the, you know, the people uh, watching this and, and that are, um, for your deployments, that they are probably needed. <laughs> Um, and so at the same time, we decided to partner um, to bring together the AppStra's engineering expertise with around the open source community, uh, with OCP specifically and our intent-based networking software and features and coupled with the supply chain and global reach of, of Dell. Um, and in addition to that, for the customers who uh, wanted an alternative option or vendor diversity, um, we also offer the same um, uh, distribution of enterprise Sonic uh, for those customers who may want to use Edge Core. And so at this point in time, um, you know, you have a full featured, uh, you know, distribution and uh, with global support, it's real alternatives to an incumbent. And so at this point in time, it's like, great, yet another open source operating system or something that's different, but like, why is it actually better? <clears throat> the first off, it's a, it's built on a very modern architecture and it's, uh, it's very modular. Um, there's lots of uses of containers that we're gonna see. Um, it leverages other open source uh, capabilities such as Psi, the switch abstraction interface, and that allows you to run the same operating system um, across multiple different vendors and multiple different ASICs. Um, and uh, so for instance, you see there that, that Psi layer, um, which is the API translation between the operating system above it and the, the ASIC below it. Um, and when I mentioned containers this this week in a lot of the social circles and Twitters and et cetera, there was conversations about um, how much container networking um, one would need if you're a networking engineer. And uh, with Sonic, you're getting some containers. Um, so <laughs> there are multiple modules, multiple containers that interact with each other. So for instance, you can see one there for FRR and you can see one for, you know, for various other ones. So it's very modular. So you, you can upgrade and enhance each one. Um, and uh, there's a centralized infrastructure, but part of this is even the routing domain or even the routing piece. So we're, by default, it's FRR, free range routing, which is also another piece of open source operating systems, uh, or I'm sorry, an open piece of uh, software. Um, and then there is this uh, infrastructure that relies on this read database engine, which Shocker is also a container. And so at a super one-on-one -on -one level, like Redis is the key value like database that provides the language independent interface and a method for persistency and replication and processing communications of like the whole subsystem. So you can look at, at this as, as like the heart of Sonic, um, even though it is highly modular and containerized. And so, you know, at this point in time, uh, if, if uh, comics have told us anything, is that with great power comes great responsibility. So now that you have this open source NOS with multiple distribution um, mechanisms, um, that is highly modular, built on microservices, runs across many networks, like what's the catch? And really the, the, it is understanding and learning how to configure an interface and interact with Sonic, how you automate it, um, what are the bits and pieces that you need to of the uh, syntax to, to um, perform 
you know, changes in the network, incremental changes in the network and minimize and avoid disruption because that's definitely a deal breaker. Um, and moving along quickly, there's several different pieces of uh, parts of Sonic that you can configure the uh, this operating system. So there's a number of CLIs and JSON interfaces and flat files and uh, and et cetera. Uh, the Dell inter the, the enterprise Sonic distribution includes a what they call a management framework, which centralizes uh, a lot of the configuration behind a common CLI. And it's a an interactive CLI, very industry standards looking CLI. Um, but what it is, is a wrapper around NetConf. Um, and so again, we're back to, we have, uh, you know, we have some flat files, we have some uh, configuration that's a wrapper around NetConf, which is very device level, you know, independently device level and not at a service level. And so, you know, if you just pause for a second and take a mental exercise, like how would you back this device up, right? Or if you refer back to the uh, earlier presentation Josh did in, in Time Voyager, like how would you roll back to a specific point in time across your entire data center when you have this many uh, items? Um, and some of which are disruptive, uh, which I'll talk about in the demo. So when you look at things like inter incremental change to the VLAN, uh, it's something quite basic that we do all the time. You have to then begin to answer certain questions like, okay, does this have an IP address in the trunk of the URF? Okay, do I touch this file or that file or do I use RISCOMP and et cetera? Um, and so unlike Spider-Man, we don't have like superpower. So it's, it's a lot of work. And this is whole layer of like independent interdependencies of like constraints that are not magically solved by any one person or any library or any math, you know, automation framework. Um, it's, uh, it's hard work. And uh, at Appster and at AOS, we've done the homework and arduous amounts of coding and testing, trialing and errors and working with the community. And to that end, we have internally we run at last count about 600 topologies internally. And uh, we run thousands of devices every day from multiple vendors uh, across numerous operating systems, switch operating systems, chipsets, virtual devices, physical devices, 5,000 devices. And of that, we perform at every branch and every merge that we have um, 10,000 10, tests per commit every time we do this. So at the end, we're talking about 15 million tests per day. And so, um, it's a, an Im immense amount of work and testing that we put into this. And I'm not saying by any means that Appstra has, you know, like solved this problem and holistically, but, um, you know, we are far in front of the lead. Uh, we have the correct framework and, and talent, et cetera. And so with AOS, you get the interoperability, the pre-validations, the normalizations, the visibility, uh, the maintenance workflows, everything that we that you see as part of Abstra and AOS is a part of it's like quote unquote a data sheet. So things like uh, intent based analytics or data center interconnect or um, you know maintenance workflows, you get all of that with Enterprise Sonic. Um, so now you actually have uh, a way of choice and control your network, you know, to adopt this you know more open, more cost effective solution if you desire, or you could deploy you know homogeneous uh, Sonic if you wanted. Um, and with that, I can yeah get a look at what this actually looks like under the hood, um, and uh, and start a demo here. Maybe, maybe. Okay. So um, what I did is I took advantage of we have a code low site um, that we use uh, internally for a lot of this testing, and you can see here I took advantage of this. Uh, we were expanding in a in a core site colo facility, um, and. We have uh, a five node network and it's part of this five node network here, um, a rack of this, which I wanna highlight on. Um, it, this is all Sonic with a few exceptions, which I'll show here. <clears throat> and um, in this topology, you can see we have lots of servers, we call these build servers. And um, what I can see here is that, you know, I, if I look, you can see that there's a serial number associated with this device and it's an active device and it's running um, Sonic, uh, specifically this build called Buzz Plus. Um, and if you look at the rendered configuration here, what you're going to see is what we consider or what's best to be considered of the startup config. So this is config.db.json. And this is startup config because uh, if you write to this device, the device reloads um, or the routing information reloads, but this is the, the non-routing piece. So if I look here, I can see that I have VRF dev uh, and inside of this VRF dev, inside of this, uh, this JSON spec, you can see um, there's a fair number of interfaces, but then there's also this config FRR. 
Um, Appster contributed a piece of code um, and upstreamed it, which was accepted by Microsoft that allows a mode for which we can write the routing instruction set directly to FRR and allow FRR to do the diffs. And the combination of really what that means is that you can make changes to the network, um, any sort of dynamic changes to the network, uh, and it doesn't impact your routing command. But if you look at alternatively other Linux-based operating systems, if you were writing to a flight, if here, if you write to that flat file, it's going to cause an impact. So what I want to do also is, is show this, this other device in our, in our colo <clears throat> that's running EOS. And you can see here the serial number um, and, and the version that it's running uh, with this 7280. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to show how quickly it is that we can um, change this device, delete a bunch of VLANs, delete, delete a bunch of security zones, and, and show the difference. But what I want to show is here's the, the running again, because we have the source of truth. Um, this is the running documentation is always up to date. So I can see I have those same BRFs uh, extended to this device. Um, uh, again, the BRF dev and just for brevity, I don't want to show all of that. But <clears throat> excuse me. Um, what I want to do is uh, make some changes in this uh, topology and start deleting some things and kind of highlight the differences between startup configuration and uh, configuration that is done incrementally. And so here you can see we have this, we have this what's called a runner. And in this runner VLAN, it's associated with, uh, in this case, every device in, the, in my colo. And I'm going to uh, make some modifications here. I'm going to select all of these and just unassign them. So this is, uh, again, two different operating systems across uh, a, a number of different devices and interfaces. And I'm just going to make some changes and say, you know what, I don't want them on all of these devices. So it's a delete or a modification, depending. And then I want to add it as a VLAN tag interface on some, you know, just random interfaces that I pick that, that really don't care. And um, in addition to this, what I want to do is not only make a change for something that exists, but I'm going to go ahead and create a new virtual network. And in this case, I'm going to create a VLAN, VXLAN back network for NFD. And so the user interface here is exactly the same, right? The composition of what that configuration looks like and the expectations is handled by AOS. So I'm going to go ahead and create this in that dev, give it an IP address, treating it like, a, like a cattle, letting the IP resources sign itself automatically. And uh, I'm just going to sign it everywhere. I'm just going to be quite heavy handed um, because I'm lazy <clears throat> for no other reason, really. Um, <clears throat> and... Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and uh, take this network field day um, and delete something else, right? So I'm going to delete all this, we call the build server. So I'm going to delete a VRF build server. I'm showing this because this is all through one, you know, atomic action that's happening um, with both adding, deleting, changing. And if I go back to that original Sonic device, and I look at my rendered config, you can see this config.dbjson, this startup config. For incremental changes, what we're doing is using RESTConf. And this is where things get really interesting, is that um, to automate this in a, in a, in a way that, uh, that is both uh, for operations and doesn't incur downtime, you can see these RESTConf uh, calls, and you can see the difference between puts and incremental, and et cetera. But you know, a little more entertaining if we go down and I, you know, I find a, a trunk interface here. You can see this this put command for VLAN seven. But because of to heart to call back to what Sasha said is that we don't store configuration. We render the configuration based on the intent, and we understand what the beginning is and what the end needs to be, and then we do that correct ordering. So here, if I look at a trunk interface. Um, you know, for this specific device, it has like an MLAG, right? So now we're seeing uh, open source operating system running MLAG, but I don't have to be concerned with what the nuances of that or the order of operations in order to make this uh, work in a, in a non-disruptive manner. And so AOS does that. And if I scroll down a little bit further, um, you can see the routing of FRR. So again, here we do the FRR configuration um, and, uh, that so um, just a, the interest of time because there's a bit of a video here uh, if i step forward um, and i look at this device uh, that i used for the arista in the interest of time what i want to do here is is i don't really want to use this arista in our colo uh, we want to use um, uh, sonic and in this case we're going to dell use a dell sonic device 
So in just a single click, if I go and swap that device out, this Sonic operating system, or I'm sorry, this Arista for a Sonic operating system, and now look, you can see in an instant, like that quickly, that everything is now rendered to start up and everything is now rendered based on that day zero configuration of that day zero intent. And all I have to do now is push commit, just as we've shown in previous, it's version control and you can branch it. Uh, and all of the analytics, telemetry and everything. So it's the same, I can look and see that there's no warnings. Uh, and, and that is showing, you know, like how, what Sonic is kind of what it looks like underneath the hood. Um, so just as a summary, uh, out of the interest of time, um, maybe say a few minutes for questions, is it, you know, it, it, Sonic is really exciting for the industry, really because, you know, it's, a, it's really the first real open source, um, I would say initiative that we've had. Uh, and now there is a way for our users to, you know, to onboard and allow you to evaluate and operationalize these in the data center without being completely disruptive. And as a transitional period, you can say, okay, I've got this incumbent vendor and I want to look at possibly doing this. I can just do one rack, right? Much like they do with applications, maybe just a portion of the data center uh, and try this out without actually, you know, completely disrupting your operational model. 